Well, this is Jack Jackson. In this video, we're going to be talking about the formal definition of a limit. It uses uh, the Greek letters epsilon and delta, so sometimes called the epsilon delta definition of limit. And I'm going to be using a GeoGebra activity that I wrote. This is freely available on GeoGebra's site. Uh, geogebra.org, G-E-O-G-E-B-R-A dot O-R-G, and you can uh, should be able to search for it under my name or, or under the name of the application. Um, and if you're in my class, I've given you a direct link to this. Uh, but before we get into this, let's take a look here at the actual definition. Uh, that little line shouldn't be there, but Given a function f and real numbers c and l, we say that the limit is x approaches c of f of x equals l if and only if for any epsilon greater than zero there exists a delta greater than zero such that if c minus delta is less than x, which is less than c plus delta, but x is not c, then l minus epsilon is less than f of x, which is less than l plus epsilon. Now, that probably sounds like a lot. If it's the first time you're seeing it, you're going, okay, what is all this? Um, you know, uh, and so this little applet, um, when GeoGebra is designed to kind of help us get an idea of what's going on. So what do these deltas and epsilons have to do with anything? Well, epsilon, you can think of as an, an error estimate. So here is an example of a function. It's a, a rational function, 3x minus 4 times x minus 1, and then it's divided by x minus 1, which is really just y equals 3x minus 4, a straight line, except it has a hole in it when x equals 1. And the limit, when you, if you were to plug 1 in this, uh, after reducing, you would get, well, if you plug 1 into it before reducing, you're going to get 0 divided by 0, so it's undefined there. But if you, after, if you reduce version, you plug in one, you get an output of negative one. That turns out to be the limit. So the way this applet works, you type in your formula here in this, this uh, input box for f of x, and then it will graph the function, which is this red graph. Then you type in the limit that you're approaching for x. So x is approaching c here, c is being one. So we put a one there. And you figure out what you think the limit's going to be, which is negative one. So this says that the point 1, negative 1 is the limit point. In this case, it's a hole in the graph, and the graph should be approaching that point. You can see it right there on the graph if you're looking at it. Okay. All right, so, what is, so what's this got to do with delta and epsilon? Well, delta and epsilon work like this. Epsilon is like somebody lays down a challenge, and they say, okay, I think you're wrong. I don't think that limit is right. In fact, I think you're off by half. And so we take the epsilon, we can either adjust it by adjusting the um, slider, and you can see what that's doing to the graph. It's defining, a it's defining a horizontal band centered up at that limit value, the what we think is the limit value of negative 1. So let's say they put a half. I can also enter a value by just typing it in right there. Type in a half. And there's, there's our epsilon limit. So it establishes these two horizontal lines, uh, L plus epsilon. In our case, that's negative 1 plus a half. So that's negative 0.5. Y equals negative 0.5 for our top. And our bottom bound is Y equals L minus epsilon. Or in our case, Y equals negative 1 minus 0.5 is negative Y equals negative 1.5 right there. So what we're saying is, They've let this issued a challenge by throwing down that particular epsilon, and they're saying, hey, I bet you can't stay within that much. And we have to pick an appropriate delta. Now, the delta we have right now is not good, because if we were to go over here, we see that there are uh, some numbers that are close enough to 1 within delta that the y numbers are outside of that. So that's not a good delta, okay? But if we make a smaller delta, say say maybe here, okay, now we see that no matter where we pick our x's in this here, except maybe actually at 1 itself, okay, it produces a y that stays within that band. See that? See where this is coming down? You can see that x gives you 
that Y and it stays within the band, horizontal band here. So this actually um, basically produces this little purple box, this little rectangular region. And what we want is we want the, the function not to run out the top and bottom of the box, top or bottom of the box, because that would give you X's that are in that band that have Y's that are outside the epsilon band here. But rather we want it to run out of the box on the sides. And so now all of the X's actually well between, give you Y's that are between whatever that is for Y and whatever that is. So that's well within the band. So notice if you ever get one delta that works, a smaller delta will also work. And that will get the inequalities to work in the, in the definition. So looking back at the definition, this says that uh, if x is close to c, how close? Well, within delta, that's horizontally within that width of that little rectangle, then where's y, or f of x, the output? It's between l minus epsilon and l plus epsilon. That's within that vertical part of that. So the function basically stays within that box. Now, it's okay if it goes out on a corner. That's okay. If it goes out right at the vertex. Okay, I don't know if I can get this exactly there, but somewhere there it may go through the, the corner. That's okay, but otherwise it cannot go out of the top of the box. It's got to go out the sides. So, of course, any delta that works, a smaller delta will also satisfy to meet that particular challenge. And so uh, there's a largest delta that works, and that's going to happen whenever the function goes out at a corner up here. And of course, the way to find that value would be just solving the equation of the function, whatever f of x is here, that equation equals whatever this y value is, in this case, uh, negative 0.5. So we could solve that since the x minus 1, it's not, x is not negative, uh, positive 1, so then that would cancel. 3x minus 4 equals, um, let's see, what do we have? We have 3x minus 4 equals negative 0.5 and just solve that equation and we can find the the uh, the x value that goes there and of course that x is is uh, x plus delta uh, or c plus delta so subtract c from that subtract 1 and you'd end up with the corresponding delta which is you know about about this okay looks like it's probably probably 1 sixth actually Okay, and that would be for that corner. You could also have a, another delta that would give you where it goes out this corner. If it's a linear function, those will be the same size. But whichever one of those is the smallest one, that's, that's what you want. And so we can use this little applet to investigate this. Now, and then the person says, well, wait, 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 wait a minute, wait a minute. I didn't even mean 0.5. Maybe I meant something smaller, like say 0.4. Oh, you're out now. Well, no problem. I just make a little smaller delta and I stay inside. And they say, oh, no, wait, I want an even smaller delta. Maybe I want uh, 0.2. Then I just make a smaller, uh, they give me a smaller epsilon. I give them a smaller delta. And the idea is no matter how small you make epsilon, you can make delta small enough so that you always meet the challenge and stay within there. And if, if the, you can make a delta for no matter what epsilon you pick, no matter how small, then you have risen to the challenge, you have the limit. Now, if there's a point where something does not have a limit, then what's going to happen is there's going to be some, some epsilon they could pick that no matter how small you make delta, there's always going to be some points outside of there. And sometimes that can happen. While we're at it, let's talk about some other things we can do with this, this applet. If I turn this off, it turns off some of the... Uh, things here. We still got the epsilon, the delta. Uh, it just gets rid of the box. If we do a right hand limit, so look at the full one again. See the purple box? Let's, uh, that's not a good good uh, delta for that epsilon. Let's go back and make it all, the whole thing a little bigger. And then, okay, so now here we go. That's a decent one because it's now going out the sides. But notice in the middle of the box is whatever we're approaching. C equals 1. This is x equals 1 is right in the middle of the box and our box goes on both sides. If we do right hand limit only, 
then now your box only has it's on the right side and so the the uh, definition down here would basically be the same okay and the only difference is the X's then would go would be this would be z between 0 and C or between C and C plus Delta okay but of course it's it's not C itself this this part here wouldn't change because the Y's can go above or below the limit and that's okay so here the Delta notes that now this can only X can only be in that part there and again this one's still good because um, everything's still fitting inside there as we go on this side and similarly we can do a left limit this time it's the little blue box on the right so the blue box and the green together make the purple box for the full limit the right limits on the side that's the green box the blue box is on the left for the left limit which is what we're seeing now and again the only thing that would change here in the limit as you limit as X goes to C and you put a little minus there for the, from the left side the, this would be the same C minus Delta is less than X but then it would only go up to C because the right side of the box is just the C there and we stay on the on the left side of that you wouldn't have to put X is not equal to C because it's this is strictly less than C not C plus Delta okay and the limit from the right it would be limit as X approaches to C and you put a little plus there saying it's coming from the right side so we can investigate limits as x approaches a point uh, either left right or full limits with this application here and again we can we can use our scroll button to kind of zoom in and out with the mouse we can move it around a little bit we can change the formula here and investigate another example and we can change when we do that of course we can change our value of C or value of the limit epsilon and Delta can be changed so all those things are dynamic and you can experiment with those and and uh, use this maybe to help you with some of your understanding of this to help you with some of your homework problems help you with some illustration and so forth and I hope you find that useful as you're reading through this you might see if you can answer these questions and uh, check your answer against the uh, answers that are provided. Hope you uh, enjoy using this.